Hello everyone, this here is the 2022 Lego Marvel Hulkbuster, and I am a not sponsored reviewer, therefore I bought this for $550 of my own money. Just independent, got it because I wanted to share with you my thoughts and you asked me to do so. Of course, when I got it, I built it live in front of the wholesome and very fun and interactive community over on my Twitch channel. Contrary to popular misconception, you don't have to pay to use Twitch. You also don't need an app. You also don't need an account. You can just watch it in a browser. Now, obviously the big deal with this is its size, not only just the height of over 20 inches or 52 centimeters, but the total mass, the visual weight of it, and just the impact of being in the same room as it. This thing is as large as a small human child and being bipedal and, you know, roughly human shaped, it really has that impact of being, whoa, 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 there, there's a person there. What? Oh, it's not a person. Okay. But interestingly, the completed set is not that heavy. It's not nearly as heavy as you would expect for its size because almost every major component of it, every major sub-assembly is hollow. And I mean that literally from head to toe and most of it in between. That's not a complaint though. That's not saying something against this. I actually really liked the build experience of this and I like the engineering of it. It feels very good to me. It's, it's not solid, but it holds itself together well enough. It doesn't feel wobbly. Uh, I'm not worried about it falling over. None of it felt finicky as I was putting it together with very, very few tiny, tiny little exceptions uh, along the way. Lego has made probably some of its biggest strides in design and engineering with how they are able to build things for the sake of instructions and how they're able to structure the instructions, the bigger and bigger sets are getting easier and easier to build. And no, I do not consider that to be a bad thing because most, uh, most Lego fans and most folks that they're trying to get into Lego or back into Lego with the whole uh, adults welcome push and everything are not super, super fans, are not super, super technical, are not in need of the most complex, most difficult assembly as they want to spend some hours putting together a Lego set and then be done with it and be able to look at it, play with it, pose it or whatnot. I do not agree with the most elite of Lego fans who believe that everything should be designed just for them to the detriment of casual fans, because as in most hobbies, casual fans of Lego are really the core of it, are the most important and by far the largest group, even though much of the innovation and uh, you know really pushing the hobby forward and being major ambassadors for the hobby most of that does come from the folks who are most into it you know would be considered the the elites but this is right as far as how it went together as far as i'm concerned the build experience this is right for what they're going for here this should be something that should be welcoming to to newcomers and folks who have only done a small number of sets and want to take on a really, really big one as a challenge to have a big display piece. And it, it works well for that with some exceptions. The biggest problem with this set for both casual and serious collectors, I believe, is what I talked about already at length when this was first unveiled, when I did my coverage of the initial photographs and official renders of the set, the proportions of the torso just aren't right and also the ankles are much too thin when you compare this to the movie model or you compare it to movie accurate models and a lot of people point to the fact that this was designed with a very specific gimmick it was designed to hold the large scale action uh, iron man action figure inside of it and that is what caused all the problems with the proportions part of that is right part of that is wrong because here's the thing all this here that i have problems with with the chest, basically the pectoral muscles being way too high, these being too low, these little gold bits being too low, these gold bits up here being much too high and much too short. All that is just fascia. That's just stuff on the on the surface. Inside of this is the cage. We'll, we'll look at that more, more closely. Inside of this is the cage. Inside of this is where the large action figure gets held. That's all taken care of. The problem is just with all this surface level stuff. They needed to draw on this surface level stuff more accurately with the correct proportions than they just didn't. It's easy enough to change that out to make it look more like it's supposed to, even if the overall 
shape of it has to be a bit boxier than the than the movie model actually actually was so my main problems are definitely in here but there's a little bit more to it as well check out the articulation of the arm this is able to bend at the elbow which is always a good thing that we are not able to see frequently enough it's able to move up here and at the the arm will actually stay out i think that's about as far as it'll go not one more click beyond that you can move the the pauldrons here around to make sure that there's enough space for the arms to to move and then the arms can also be rotated forward and back and there's a good amount of friction in there with some friction adding joints and so this will also hold itself up and you look on the other side you can see that i've got a, a thumb up that's done here with the correct uh, correct design for the hands this is how the age of ultron uh uh MCU version of Hulkbuster was designed with the three fingers and a thumb. And these all have nice ball joints down at the base. So you're able to move these around quite a bit. And individual phalanges are on hinges as well. So you can do a bunch of a bunch of stuff with those. Probably don't want to put the middle finger out, even though it's not you know, quite accurate. But yeah, you can do all kinds of things with the with the hands, which which is good. These can also be rotated around. A little bit of limitation to the to the movement there, but there's also the built-in light brick which glows conspicuously orange okay all of them all of them do at least they're being honest about that these days and these are able to move up and down so if you rotate around this way then you're able to angle up and down at the wrist as well so those are the main points of articulation in this it has no articulation at the waist this is all completely solid here I mean, except for like just just add on pieces for the sake of looks but none of this is going anywhere and though you see this moving a little bit relative to the legs there's no motion here at the thigh down at the knees with the exception of the knee cap that can be rotated a little bit as you desire or at the ankles you know these conspicuously thin ankles you might think were designed to allow some room for it to move around but no uh it's all completely static now i personally am okay with this being static but since it was going to be static this is that design decision was made why didn't they make it more accurate by <laughs> covering this up again with just surface level stuff to make it look more like the quote-unquote real thing also as i mentioned most of this is hollow in construction and some places you can really really see those hollows and they become very very conspicuous and the stuff around the calves isn't quite so bad and up into the thighs i actually really personally like the the thighs the design of them the use of the golds you got some gunmetal gray up here and especially around the the front the, um, the the greebling and the texturing here that's really nice getting up into the torso torso so far we're okay there are actually are some small gaps here but it doesn't bug me as soon as i get up to here you get some big gaps big old square gaps that are very very obvious and then up at the shoulders well this is completely exposed you can try to put the put the pauldron in a spot where it covers up some of that but the pauldron shape honestly is is wrong it, it should be pointed at both ends or worst case scenario this should be rotated around and then at a different angle so it's coming up from the side rather than going out from the top but you see all this mechanical detail gets just left out there for all of us to see including the much maligned blue pins and such and yeah that's 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 not good hollow with stuff over the top because it's just hollow with no stuff over the top and then here at the neck i mean you can see light right through there that's not a good look and not a good feeling i haven't really talked about the back of the torso yet or shown it much but here it is this is a large galaxy explorer style canopy done in molded pearl gold with a sticker over the top of that uh, well technically on the inside of it this piece has a sticker here yes there are a bunch of stickers used throughout the set and you do end up with three major colors of gold for if you if you count the dark tan that's used for a bunch of the the pieces definitely there's some mismatches there uh, kind of standard fare for that doesn't bother me too much overall this is just a strangely low poly low texture area that feels kind of weird but relative to the to the actual thing in in the movie the actual prop it's i think it's acceptable the squared squaredness out here is unfortunate but that's just part of the the main frame that is 
the fault, I believe, of the the gimmick that they went for. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let this slide. But overall, the back doesn't look great, but at least it is it is covered up. The the front is also covered up. <laughs> it's proportion wrong. The sides are not covered up enough underneath the arms. Now I showed you the light up repulsors in the palms. There's also an arc reactor, which does have the new Fresnel lens element recolored into an opalescent trans light blue, which looks pretty good. And it's a nice piece, nice to have. And there is a light brick behind that as well. But once again, it's orange. Yep. And <laughs> most uh, most frustrating to me personally during the build process. <laughs> One thing that I like least about the build process is the fact that the light itself is misaligned. So it's not focused for the lens and it's also uh, like a half of a plate too high. You can see that the the beam is not hitting right in the in the center of it. If they had moved the whole light brick assembly back one stud and then down like a half of a plate, then this would be so much brighter and it would be lighting up the whole thing instead of just the half. Even though it is still orange, of course, you know, blue would be better. Uh, just a plain white would be perfectly fine. But just as it is, the fact that that is off in two ways for this one little key feature that we do pay a lot for is is not fun. And also the, the actuator here is is not the most inconspicuous. I think that could have been made to look a little bit nicer again with just something different over the top of it. But it's it's not the the worst of my worries here. Oh, I forgot to mention one other novelty with this. There's actually a two by two glow in the dark dish hidden behind this four by four, just right down there in the center. And the light shines through that, which makes it even dimmer, but you know, it does glow in the dark a bit. And also this has glow in the dark knee pads. So that right there will glow in the dark. Same thing over on this side. It doesn't really do that much. You know, the, the new Lego glow in the dark plastic that they're using these days works really, really well. But uh, compared to even an orange light brick, it just has really limited utility. It doesn't really add that much, honestly, in my opinion. So what is the deal with the large action figure version of Iron Man fitting inside of the Hulkbuster? Well, it is sold separately. It is not included in any form with the Hulkbuster set itself. $40 US for this and, you know, varies from there. But it's very, very simple how this works. You basically just get this into a nice, neat, narrow, straight up and down format uh, or, or pose. You open up the top, you flip down the front, which the last part isn't even necessary, and you just put this in. It basically just slips down straight. You don't have to do any special posing. There it goes. It just kind of falls into place. Line up the head, kind of, sort of. Do that, do that, and there you go. So there he is. Cool. Cool. Thumbs up. Honestly, it's a G whiz sort of feature. Kind of cool that they got it in there. Uh, but once it's in there, you don't really see it. Most of what most people are gonna be able to do with that feature is just this. Just opening up the big head and showing the little head inside. And be like, look, that's the actual action figure. You know, if you get the family, friends or whatever coming over, you wanna impress them. Like, look, there's another one inside. It's like nesting dolls. You know, too bad you can't put a minifigure inside of this one just for the heck of it. But you can see that the the cavity for this is very, very large, which makes it so you don't have to do any special gymnastics here. But probably some of the space that that was reserved for the large action figure in there is excess. The good thing that comes out of this when you put that in there is it does fill in at least one major important gap. It's not actually that major, but it is important to me at least. Right there, can no longer see light through the through the collar area. It doesn't really help with the sides. You can see a, I can see a hand or a side of a yeah. I guess it's the side of a hand, but it doesn't really help with filling any of this in and any of this here and and stuff. Nothing's really different around the back, but at least that is helped and it shows just how simple it is to remove the appearance of some of the gaps on this. Now the Hulkbuster set has a side build as follows. It's just a plaque and a little stand for the single included minifigure plus space to hold the all important brick separator. That's new and different and kind of cool. Like, okay, why not do that? It, it, it's fine. 
happy with that. This black is still a sticker. Maybe one day they'll make all of these with prints. They promise to do that with future Ultimate Collector Series Star Wars sets. It remains to be seen if they'll do that with all of them on the whole across all themes. I don't think there are any mistakes. This time they usually do make mistakes though. The minifigure is exclusive as super fans have demanded, but unfortunately it's not a particularly interesting exclusive figure. It's got an exclusive torso print, but reuses the same Tony Stark double-sided face. And you can see a little bit of the secondary face showing up behind the hair. Maybe I can hide that a little bit better here. Does that line up? Now you can still see some of it. The print that is there, like that is good. Uh, that is good, but it really could have used for such an expensive set. I think it could have used at least some arm printing. You know, I, I think that would have been reasonable to honestly expect. I'm not, I'm not super entitled myself. Like I, I usually don't feel like Lego, Lego, Lego owes us X or Y, but in this case, only one minifigure included with this, even though it's not a minifig included set or a focused set and minifig scaled set set. If you are going to include a minifig, make it really good. This one, this one just isn't it's simple as that. Lastly, these are leftover pieces. There's not a whole lot of note here and the sticker sheet. Uh, well, you know, it, it had quite a bit on it, quite a number and quite an expanse of coverage of stickers for this set. In terms of value, again, I paid $550 US for this. It is 550 euros, 475 pounds UK, 700 Canadian. Check the tape over there on my other screen. Yep, 700 Canadian, 850 Australian. Some of those are less fair than others, as is always the case. But I don't think any of those entirely make sense. I like to compare Lego things, especially more expensive, big Lego things to uh, non Lego things that are comparable, you know, that are that are competitive. Other things that provide you a similar visual impact, similar collectible value, display value, or even uh, a similar building experience, not the same type of experience, but length of, of build process, if not more. And there just really isn't anything that I can compare this to competitively. The closest would be the large scale sideshow collectibles uh, version of this movie accurate version of this, which is almost almost as tall, not as massive overall, but almost as tall. But that when it first came out was already $100 US more than this. And since then, it's gone up significantly. I think it went up to 850 US. And the last time I looked at is the most recent prices I can see are like 1200 new. I don't know if that's technically aftermarket now, but like it started significantly more expensive than this and this has only gone up since then. Not really a fair comparison. Now, that said, the Sideshow Collectibles release is movie accurate. It looks right. Unlike this, unlike this, but it's much more expensive and not as massive. This thing has some serious, serious shelf presence. I wonder exactly who it's for. Like, who is this good for? I think if you're not a stickler for the details at all, if you like a good big mech to put on display and you like Lego, maybe you're a fan of Iron Man in particular in the MCU, but you know, you're not a Marvel super fan. So the fact that the proportions here are very wrong, head scratchingly wrong at that is not going to bother you. Again, the build experience for this was nice. It felt good to me. It felt comfy. And unlike many of these huge, huge sets that Lego puts out, this one can be moved around with confidence. It's got this space under here. Don't think dirty about it. It's got this space that's very, very secure. You can just lift it like that. I'm not worried about this. And you know, it's got a lot of weight down below. If you're worried about it tilting out of your hand, just put a hand on up here on, you know, by the shoulder or something or here around the middle of the body. It's, it's all good. This is, this holds itself together nicely. As you put it together, it, it feels, it feels kind of cool because it is hollow, but it has almost an exoskeleton uh, design to it, which just, it just works. It works well. Too bad you don't have articulation down here, but again, that's, that's okay. But I think that's such a tiny, tiny niche. Folks who are willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a collectible, you know, something to put on display and that's it. 
something that's this huge that have the space to display something this big. Most of, most of those folks are going to want the chest to be a little bit right. This isn't right at all. And it's such a head scratcher to me because again, it's, it's not because of the inclusion of the ability to put the little figure in there. Again, which is not included. It's not because of that. There's a certain amount of space that was reserved for that. Cool. It's the stuff that's on top of that. Beyond that, the stuff that's drawn on top of the frame. That is fundamentally wrong. And then down here with, again, with, with the ankles, we talked about that plenty. But this is what bugs me the most. And I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Also, if you're going to be spending this much money, you probably don't want to have these giant gaps here. I don't know if I played it up enough. This is not good. It's, it's not a good look. Also being able to see the blue pins in there. And why are these shaped the way that they are? The point should be up or down, but not out. <laughs> that doesn't fix it because you have this big pizza slice that's missing right here. It's not right. It's close, but no cigar. Value is very relative. Oh, and with this very nice convenient, this is something I definitely didn't uh, point out yet. Apologies for that. With this nice and convenient secure space where you can lift it up, there's this huge gray rectangle here. Why? Why? It's got sharp corners. Who, who, who's going to be okay with that? Put some inverted tiles down there at least. Build it up a little bit. They didn't do anything. They just left it there. Some really, really weird design decisions I don't get. I personally am fine with the figure. It's not a minifigure scaled thing. This is absolutely exclusive. So for all the folks who are who buy Lego only to invest in it. It's only a profit vehicle for them. They don't care about the building experience. They don't care about the hobby at all. They only care about the, the return on investment for the minifigs. There, it's an exclusive minifigure. It's not a great one, but it is 100% exclusive to a $550 set. So it'll be really, really expensive and you'll be able to make your money back. There, takes care of that problem. <laughs> but it's not something that I'm personally going to complain about or dock this set for because it's not a minifig scale set it's all this i'm very torn about this very very torn and i didn't i did not expect to be i expected to be almost 100 negative about it but i'm not because that again that build experience was genuinely just good and if i can look past the details that are wrong i still like it i still have good feelings about it in general in spite of all the the head scratchers involved here i might even keep this thing on display for a while we will see but i still kind of like it i'm looking forward to seeing what folks who have more time than i do uh, come up with to fix some of the proportions here maybe eventually i will just get so tired of looking at these ridiculously tall pecs and just shorten that or lengthen the the little gold bits which should be fairly simple fairly simple i think i've said enough about this though hopefully you understand where i'm coming from whether you agree with my opinions or not you know that's all good i'm just here to present what i see what i have experienced and then hopefully give you enough information and uh, enough transferal of that experience to help you to come to some some conclusions of your own so thank you very much for watching and big thanks to all of the fantastic folks over on Twitch who came along for the ride during the build and watched the process of this going together and how actually good it was until the very end. This is right, right at the end that the, the worst stuff happens, but we had a lot of good fun over there. We always do. It's a very wholesome space. We get silly, we get serious, but all in all, it's just a good experience. So thank you very much, everybody over there. Thank you, everybody here. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.